Once the patient is brain dead, the patient is indeed dead. It just so happens that we have a heart that functions and a, a lungs that will function on a respirator artificially and kidneys that will function. So, but once the brain is dead, uh, truly one is dead. First of all, it is never one person decision. For example, I'm the transplant surgeon, I'm going to transplant those organs, but I'm never the one who's declaring somebody brain dead so that the organs can be taken out. Brain death is actually a determination uh, of function of the brain. And all function of the brain must be lost uh, by our criteria actually established by the President's Commission. And all 50 states recognize that. If there's no function in the brain, and that's the way it must be, then brain death uh, can be declared and should be declared. And in order to do that, there are specially trained personnel doing that, doctors, and not even one doctor. You need at least two doctors separately come in and do all the tests and look at everything and independently decide that this is a, a brain dead and uh, uh, declare it likewise. If you're brain dead, you're gone. You, this strange thing has happened where you're gone but your body's lingering just for a little while. It would have gone ahead and died as well, but you know, physicians and nurses are keeping it alive. But you're gone. If the patient is indeed brain dead, uh, that, that all that testing is done by the hospital at that point is when um, the possibility for organ donation arises and that's when our family services coordinators would approach the family for, for consent.